Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? This is gonna be kind of a quick one, so let's just get straight into it. I guess you could say I'm taking a week off on the podcast, even though I'm giving you this episode, so it's kind of like I'm not, but anyway. I wanted to answer a question that keeps coming up down in the comments of other podcast episodes. That question is generally along the lines of, where else on the internet can my podcast be found? Whether it's Google Play or iTunes or other various podcast services. And it's been getting asked frequently enough that I feel it's worth commenting on. I'll try to keep it brief so you can actually understand the reasons behind why I don't do it. The simple answer is, yeah, I don't. I intentionally don't publish the podcast outside of YouTube with a little teeny exception that we'll get to in a bit. There's a few different reasons, but it generally all has to do with the content that I want to try to create and how I need to publish it. So let's say I wanted to offer my podcast on Google Play, just a random example. Well, because that's outside the realm of YouTube, suddenly I need to start worrying about getting sponsors to cover in place of the advertising that I'm no longer getting on YouTube. Now, hands off your keyboards. This isn't all about money. This isn't about me trying to make a bunch of money because I don't. YouTube is still very much a part-time thing for me. But what a lot of people don't seem to understand is uploading episodes, making them available to other podcast platforms isn't as simple as me signing up for an account and clicking an upload button. Google Play and iTunes and Spotify and the other podcast apps don't actually let you upload the file to them. They're simply content aggregators. They're basically search engines. So I would have to go and find some place to host the files themselves that they could get picked up through like an RSS feed by all of those aggregators. And every time someone on one of those aggregators wants to listen to the podcast, they're actually downloading the file that I have hosted somewhere. Well, that costs money. And one of the main goals that I've had for my YouTube channel ever since the beginning is generally just to have it be self-sufficient. The money that I've made in ad revenue and also Patreon supporters has been reinvested back into the channel. So if I suddenly have these additional expenses in terms of hosting, well, now that's eating into my ability to further the channel in other ways, to buy products and things to review, or to buy retro tech that I can do retrospectives on, that kind of stuff. So I would end up having to, in order to offset that cost of external hosting, have to go down the road of soliciting advertisers or sponsors for those episodes. And I really, really don't want to do that. I, to this date, have not done a single sponsored video. I have never received money from a company other than just YouTube ad revenue and my Patreon supporters. And it's because I don't want to give up control. There's a big difference between uploading a video to YouTube that's monetized and actually getting a sponsored video. When I upload a video to YouTube, I don't have any control over which ads run. And some day, sometimes I don't even really have control as to when they run. But that's all something YouTube does for me. They've got the algorithms and the machine learning and all that stuff to figure out what ads to run when on videos. But if I were to host the podcast episodes elsewhere, I have to do that myself. I have to go out and solicit for basically advertisers. And when you need to do that, when you get into that sort of situation, suddenly you're no longer responsible to your viewers for your content like I have been all along, but you're suddenly responsible to your advertiser for the content because they're not going to want to put their name on something that either makes them look bad or they don't agree with. One of the things that I really value is my independence. It's one of a few reasons why I really, you know, started YouTube to begin with. And believe it or not, money is not one of the reasons why I'm into YouTube. (laughs) If you have your own channel, you completely understand why. I just want to make sure that my content is true to the way I want to represent it. It's my actual thoughts without me having to overly self-censor myself or not cover certain topics that I would otherwise want to cover because maybe a sponsor didn't like it. You know what I mean? It's it's trying to keep the integrity of my content without a third party dictating the way it needs to be. So that's generally the reason why I've stayed away from, you know, hosting these separately for those kind of sponsorship kind of integrity reasons 
There's another reason as well, though, and that it's because I don't necessarily see myself exclusively as being a podcaster. I see myself as a content creator in general. And the kind of content that I create has run the gamut, anywhere from DIY videos and reviews to podcasts, and then now mini documentaries. If you watch that episode that I did not too long ago about Free Geek, where I spent a lot of time on that episode, and that was a lot of fun. I like to see myself as being more than just, well, every week I sit down and talk about a topic. That's part of who I am. But it's not all of it. So by having my podcasts stay on YouTube, it brings eyeballs to the other kinds of content that I create. It helps me figure out more about what kinds of content do I want to create and how do I want to create it based on the way all those other videos get responses. There are certain types of videos I know I'm never going to do again because everyone hated them and vice versa. So Having all of my content generally in one place, I think, is beneficial to all of us because we can learn from it together and some of it can tie into other stuff. And I'm not necessarily splitting my audience like I would be if I had podcasts here on YouTube and elsewhere across a few different platforms. I love the sense of community that YouTube has and how, you know, for better, or for worse, you've got the comment section and people can discuss stuff. And I've been really trying hard to foster a good sense of community on this channel where we can all have like, you know, just good, solid conversations about things. And it's not just all, you know, finger pointing at each other and and people trash talking the way I did or said something or how I've been going on for too long on this episode or, you know, whatever. I love that sense of community. And that's actually primarily why I became a YouTuber to begin with. I don't want to give that up by hosting episodes elsewhere where it becomes just more of a me pushing to them into the void and I don't really get much back in terms of communication. I, I hope all of this makes sense. I did try going down that road a little bit with SoundCloud probably over a bit over a year ago and it worked okay, but SoundCloud isn't really that much of a podcast platform. And they also charge you money to host more than, you know, a certain amount of content. So it didn't really work out. Now, what has worked out, kind of coming back from the beginning of the episode, there is a decent solution. And that's what I've been doing so far. And it's called Patreon. One of the things I've been doing is every podcast has been getting converted, not just to video for YouTube, but also to a plain MP3 file and uploaded to Patreon a few days before the file episode shows up on YouTube. And I think a lot of people bail out on these podcasts before I get to that point. But at the end of every podcast, I actually tell you about this, how if you're interested in audio only versions, they're available for Patreon supporters at all contribution levels. And that's intentional. The minimum contribution that you can do on Patreon is a dollar a month, which is not a whole lot of money. And I wish I could set it to something like 50 cents or even cheaper, but I, I can't. But it's a great way to one compensate for the law minimum, you know, small amount of loss of ad revenue that I would otherwise experience from people not watching on YouTube. Granted, it's I don't make a ton of money off of this anyway, but it also helps me keep that community because we can talk about this kind of stuff on Patreon too. And it's great because since the episodes go live early, I get some early feedback as to how well in general I think an episode's going to be. Plus, I can post bonus content and show notes and additional thoughts and do the occasional giveaway and that kind of stuff. And it ends up being a really good time. So anyway, I just wanted to share my thoughts as to what this was all about. Generally, what it boils down to is it's all about you. And I want to give you the best quality content that I can. And it takes a lot of time to put all of this together. And so I want to get it in front of as many eyes and ears as I possibly can, you know, because otherwise it may just get lost in the noise that is the rest of the Internet. <laughs> Anyway, I'm curious as to your thoughts, of course, so be sure to leave those down in the comments below. Consider Patreon if you want. Otherwise, hey, you're still welcome here on YouTube, and I'll continue to, you know, hang out with you all down in the comments when I can. And in any event, if you like this one, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.